So all of that just needs to be swimming in your mind as we go through this text, okay? Let's walk through it then. Verse five, Jesus says, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying I am he and will deceive many. Okay, so remember we're looking at this through both the lens of 30 to 70 AD and the rest of life after the destruction of the temple. Um, We know that there were people actually who were claiming to be the Messiah during that period of 30 to 70 AD. I'm not gonna tell you all their stories, but I will give you their names just so you know that I'm not making it up. Um, We have people called Thoidus, Judas the Galilean, Simon Magus, um, Dosithois, his mom should have called him Meher Shalal Hashbaz, Dosithois, um, these guys were claiming to be the Messiah, claiming to be somebody, is what the way, the way that the scripture talks about it. And we had these false messiahs that were showing up at that time, but they continue to show up today. Usually we call them cult leaders, right? These people who claim to either be Jesus or have a manifestation of Jesus or something like this. Um, but it even happens in a subtle way to us. Really anybody who says, trust in me and I will bring you to some form of utopia, or listen to me and I will give you all the answers that no one else is giving you, that's a false Messiah, right? Because that's what Jesus promises. I'm going to bring you to heaven, utopia, perfect life, right? And he says, trust in me, my words are true. So anybody, whether they be maybe a politician or a scientist or a YouTuber who is telling you, I have the secret knowledge, trust in me and everything will be okay. I can bring you to the special place. That's a false Messiah. Jesus says, this will happen. What does he say to do? Watch out, right? Because many will come in my name saying, I'm the Messiah. I'm the one you should trust in. I'm the one you should listen to. He then says, when you hear wars, hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We know that this happened in 30 to 70 AD. Uh, we have it on a couple really good sources. Uh, uh, Suetonius, one of the great Roman historians, Tacitus, who is the greatest Roman historian, and Josephus, who is arguably the greatest Jewish historian of the period. And what's really interesting about those guys is all of them are against Christianity, right? The Romans didn't like Christianity, the Jews didn't like Christianity, and so they would have at least some motive to write history that doesn't accord with the Bible, and yet they do. Uh, Tacitus actually tells us that there were conflicts in Germany, Africa, Thrace, Gaul, Britain, Armenia, and a civil war happening among the Parthians during this time. Josephus writes, there are so many conflicts across the Roman Empire and so many people are writing about them that I'm not even going to write about them. There's so, many, there's so much evidence for it. But what I think is really interesting is what Jesus says among these wars and rumors of wars. He says, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end isn't still to come. In other words, he says, When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, that's not a sign. That's just normal life. That's just what life is like when you are corrupt, sinful people who hate each other and want to destroy each other. War and rumor of war, normal. Don't be alarmed by those things. That's not a sign. He continues with the same thought, right? He says there will be earthquakes in various places and famines. Again, from Tacitus, he tells us that there were earthquakes in Crete, Smyrna, Miletus, Chios, Samos, Laodicea, Hierapolis, Colossae, Campania, Rome, Judea, and Pompeii, all during this time. We know about famines, too. The scripture talks about this in Acts when it says that there were Christians who were taking up collections for people who were in um, famine-plagued areas. But you see what Jesus says? He says, these are the beginning of birth pains, which Paul uses that same phrase to describe what life has been like since the fall into sin. He says, from the moment sin came into the world, the whole creation has been groaning in the pains of childbirth right up to the present moment. In other words, earthquakes, famines, wars and rumors of wars, pandemics, not signs, just normal life in a corrupt world. When you see those things, repent. Because that's a reminder, a daily constant reminder that the world is messed up and it needs a savior. But don't go thinking that this is a sign that the end of the world is coming soon. You don't know when it's coming. It could come before I'm done speaking. It could come 10,000 years from now. 